Now both of my wishes have been fulfilled. We have fake elections and we live in a police state. I'd like <clears throat> to begin with a kind of confession. In the course of my life, I made two big political mistakes, at least two that I am aware of. In 1996, when Yeltsin was running against the communist Zyuganov for the presidency of Russia, I so badly wanted Yeltsin to win that I openly told everyone I knew that had I the opportunity to tamper with the final tally, I would without hesitation add millions of votes for Yeltsin in order to prevent the communists from taking control of my country again. Now when I hear about violations of every sort during elections in Russia, I always remember what I myself asked for 25 years ago. The second mistake happened in 2000. This was the year when uh, that Putin came to power. The elections took place in March, and in January, tragedy struck my own family. My sister, her husband, and her 11-year-old son were killed by two men who broke into their apartment to rob them. At the time of the elections, the murderers had yet to be caught. My only desire at that time was to have them arrested, and looking at the poor state of Russian police, I repeatedly said that I wanted to have a so-called strong hand in power, that I wanted to live in a society where everything was under control. In other words, I wanted to live in a police state. Now both of my wishes have been fulfilled. We have fake elections, and we live in a police state. Being an emigre is not a merit, and to stay in a country that can rightly be called fascist and to keep a low profile is no merit either. I'd like to exploit a metaphor suggested by a good friend of mine. Imagine that you are sitting in a train and a gang of thugs, hooligans, enters your car and starts terrorizing the passengers. One group of people moves to another car, a bigger group stays with their eyes down, pretending not to see the atrocities going on around them. From the ethical point of view, these two groups are in a similar position. But there is a very small number of people who are trying to fight off the bullies, even if this fight is doomed to fail. Those people, rather than me, deserve to represent Russia here and elsewhere. They are unable to crush Putin's regime, but they try to save the nation's honor. These people deserve to be named, each of them, but I will mention just a few. Alexei Gorinov, Ilya Yashin, <clears throat> Vladimir Karamurza, Evgeny Roizman, Yuri Dmitriev, and of course the first name to be mentioned is Alexei Navalny. Finally, I would like to speak about what I was asked in the first place. How do I see the role of the Russian writer, the artist, in the current situation? I think the key word here is humility. It is not our stories or speeches that determine the fate of the world, but the courage of the Rus Ukrainian people and its president, uh, their fighting spirit, and of course the readiness of Western countries to render military and economic aid. Moreover, the sense of national shame, disgrace experienced by each of us can hardly encourage us to make great artistic discoveries. As for the so-called consolation of Russian culture, it is quite obvious that that is not happening in Europe, but mainly in Russia itself, where theaters are closed, the freedom of speech, freedom of the press these days is severely restricted. This process started not now, but long ago. Here is what I wrote in 2017. You just don't know the whole truth. You've heard that said countless times by anti-European Russians in Paris in Rome. That's all they talk about. People don't like us here, don't like us there. My friends, you know where they like us least of all? In Moscow, at home. As for the fact that these days someone in Poland or the Baltic states is not dancing the nutcracker or is not staging Boris Godunov, we, can do much, we cannot do much about it. The criminal gang that seized power in my home country has nothing to do with any kind of culture. 
whether you call it imperialistic or not. Did Putin attack Ukraine because he read too many Russian books or listened a lot of Russian music? No, he did not. The only comforting thing I have to say in this regard is that all wars come to an end, and this one is no exception. Russian language and culture can stand up for themselves, so Tchaikovsky will remain, remain Tchaikovsky, and Pushkin will remain Pushkin, and we too will remain who we are. Thank you.